I'm here with Jackie Sanderson from Douglas County Open Space. We're gonna explore the streamside habitat. Come on! To catch these insects, it's really good to get something like an aquarium net, or you could also get a sieve from the kitchen and take it down to the water. If you see an animal that you want, take a net and swoop around. You might get a little sand or mud with it. And then take your hand and support the sand and mud and bring it up and see what animal you've caught. Some people call them crayfish. Some people call them crawdads. It's part of the food web here. Do you know of any of the animals that might eat a crawdad? A raccoon. A raccoon. To let this crayfish go, what we'll do is just let him down gently into the water. He lives on the bottom, so he's going to float to the bottom, and that's where he feels really comfortable, is just crawling right along the bottom. And then it's really important to turn your net inside out and sweep it back and forth in the water to clean it off, because there are a lot of other little creatures that live down in the, in the creek, too, that are in that sand or mud that you might have in your net. Okay, what we have right here on top of the water are whirligig beetles. Um, they're a true beetle, they're adults, and they can fly, um, but they live most of their life right on the top of the water, swimming, and they tend to swim around in circles, and that's what these are doing right now. Um, because they live on the top of the water, you don't have to scoop down very far. Just put your net underneath, and you can see these beetles have hard shells, and they have strong legs right in the front that they use for their swimming. When you're along the stream, you'll find a lot of different plants that you don't usually find upland. These plants are specialized for living in the water. And these plants are really important along the stream because this is where a lot of the baby insects will live and find cover. You'll find fish and um, dragonfly nymphs and all kinds of other insects in here hiding um, so that bigger fish won't come along and eat them. Not only insects, but here we have a fish Colorado has a lot of native minnows that live in small streams like this. These minnows can be food for, again, the raccoons and a lot of the water birds that come down to feed. Should I pick this minnow up with my bare hands, or what should I do first? Before first, I pick you my... should get your hands wet. OK, do you want to release this one for me? OK. Zane's so got to wet his hand first so he doesn't take off the protective slime from the fish. And then he's going to put it back in the water very gently. Along the stream, you can find a lot of signs of various animals that live here. And right here, you can see an old beaver log. Um, you can see it's kind of rounded now, but there are some old beaver chews um, along this log. And this is where beavers have lived at different times. These are dragonfly nymphs, baby dragonflies, that live usually down in the muck or the sand, kind of hidden. And they're also carnivores, so they'll be predators on the other insects that come along, like mayflies and little damselflies that they might eat. This is an adult damselfly. Um, it's a real pretty blue. And you can tell the difference between a damselfly and a dragonfly, because a dragonfly will land with its wings spread out, and a damselfly will land with its wings tucked up behind them. When it's a baby, you'll find them in the water, usually around by the plants. What kind of life can you find in the shaded areas? Well, this is kind of a neat area because these big rocks, which are the Castle Rock Conglomerate, they've provided some really good shade and habitat for um, a lot of the small fish that live in here. If you look right there on the top of the water, you can see the water striders, and they need still water so that they can hunt around on the surface of the water and um, and they don't even break the tension of the water with their feet. That's how they're able to kind of walk on water. And these pools just provide that extra still habitat for them. Come over here, Ian. We'll turn over some rocks and see if we can find any of the insects that are called the clingers. They just like to cling onto these rocks. And as the water goes by, a lot of oxygen gets on their gills. Well, I do see a snail hanging onto the rock here. It's probably eating some of the algae off the rock. There's a stonefly. Gets really flat, likes to hide from fish. 
He looks pretty primitive. He has a couple of long tails behind him. And then right over here, see this little guy with the dark head? Yeah. And it looks like this over here is a caddisfly that's come out of his casing. He'll move around and then build another case, probably out of stones.